ladies and gentlemen, the Fire Sign Theater is on the air. Okay, here we go. We'll take it in five, four, three, <coughs> two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, let me introduce the new president of the United States of America. Accompanied by his own personal Secret Service escort, David Nixon Eisenhower and Mark Spitz Eisenhower. Thank you, men. Dateline today. Deadline now. This is Just Folks, the live weekly broadcast magazine of the air feeling the pulp of the people. <laughs> I'm Ed E. Torres, and tonight, we'll visit the big old radio museum in Atwater, Ohio, the commercial marathon in Hooker Heights, California. <laughs> and I'll be rooting around looking for my own roots here in sophisticated New York City. Yes, but first, the bigness of big America is bigger business. And here's Just Folks West Coast reporter Peggy Blisswhips with two of the biggest in the business. Peggy? Yes, Ed, I'm here in prominent Hooker Heights, California, where the always lively semi-annual chicken stretching festival has just ended. And the stunned population has to sit on their hands now and bear witness to the endless commercial marathon championships being held today here in the big parking lot. Well, I hope they'll ask me to join in. I'm really all ready, but I see they're, they're warmed up in the bullpens now and all ready to go on this extravagant sell till you drop, pitch till you pop marathon. And here they go. Hey, 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 hey. Hiya, friends. Ralph Sports Bart, Ralph Sports The world's largest used nude and nude loot automobile dealership, Ralph Sportsman Motors, here in the beautiful city of Hooker. Hey, you've heard about the extras on this fabulous car. Wow, wheel spoke fenders, two way sneeze through wind vents, sponge coated edible steering column, chrome fender dents, and factory air conditioned air from our beautiful air conditioned factory. It's a beautiful car, friends. Unfortunately, it's been sold, but the commercials go on and on and on. And here's Ed to tell you why. Yes! Yes, my brother Gog was right about the comet. How were we to know it would land right in the middle of our giant warehouse? It's a cataclysmic sale down here. We're flooded. We're over our poor heads in remnants, burn ends, and labels from such naturally famous weaves as Royal Moo, Lemurian, Western S, and Munchkin Mills. Dog hairs, nerballs, slick snags, trapezes, we got them, you get them. Your nap will rise again, and that's my story! Good God, it's Magog Brothers! Carpet reclaimers serving Hooker, Heater, Hellmouth, and the Low Desert Area. Shoes, Shoes for, for industry. industry. Shoes, Shoes for, for the dead. dead. Shoes, Shoes for, for industry. industry. Hi, I'm Joe Beats. Say. What chance does a returning deceased war veteran have for that good paying job? More sugar and that free mule you've been dreaming of. Well, think it over, then take off your shoes. Now you can see how increased spending opportunities means harder work for everyone, and more of it too. So do your part today, Joe. Join with millions of your neighbors and turn in your shoes for industry. They don't want it anymore, Dr. Gunderson. Well, they don't want what, child? My coffee. The warden says he's tired of my coffee. <laughs> oh, it's been pretty clear, child, that your coffee don't got zest appeal. Zest appeal? Why, why what's that? I don't know. <laughs> it's a secret. It's the uh, secret ingredients in Airzat's brother's coffee. Uh, Look! Uh, no, down there! It's uh, a blend of the finest Brazilian tar beans, chili, chicken nuts, and Spanish flies. Uh, Here, take this can home with your can, sweetie. Uh, the next morning. <laughs> More <laughs> coffee? Oh, uh, Lord! No, those flies, those little flies, I think I've had enough. Oh, 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 oh. 
there's Arch Brothers Coffee, the real one. Look for the can in the plain brown can. Here they come in their hell for leather golf carts. Full street people! Terrifying their own children, living in a world only they can understand. They'll bug you. They'll bug your mind. Full street people! You'll see them in breakfast nooks across the country, smoking cigarettes, <coughs> drinking martinis, driving... Two cars! <laughs> See them hanging out at redemption centers, licking glue. Making deals with total strangers. Full street people! Bully, 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 You'll bully, bully, be inside bully. their minds, as they say. Anything more from the supermarket, honey? More sugar! Full street people! Now playing in patios and parking lots everywhere from Paranoid Pictures. This movie has been rated X the Unknown. Positively, no one will be admitted. Admitted, 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 admitted. admitted. I love you. Hi. Hi. This, this is, is Wayne Boone. <laughs> to ask you, you this important, important question. question. Who, Who are, are you? you? Many people, Many people believe, believe it or, or not, or not don't. don't. Do, or and not. what's... Don't. Well, can't. Well, can't. What's more? Why? why? why not? That's why? easy, Wayne. They're suffering from multiple identity. Wayne, am I the, the confuser? confuser. <laughs> the ingestion of fatal toxins into the system has been proven to be directly responsible. Indeed, indirectly responsible. In more than 100% of all the cases on record. And his record sales are increasing daily. Ah. So, so remember, remember those, those pledges, pledges and honor and them, honor them during, during this, this multiple, multiple identity year. year. Thanks. 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 Thanks, Wayne. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks. And remember that M.I., the, the confuser, confuser. <laughs> can strike anyone, anywhere, at any time. At home. In the office. Or where you work. <laughs> Attention, aliens. Marrying an animal can mean citizenship for you. <laughs> Listen to these success stories from your U.S. husbandry service. Filipino housemaid Janet Gangabangalang <laughs> left her native Manila in an envelope to marry a prize-winning Iowa boar. Now he's dead well, and she's and living off the fat of the land. As you can see, I'll land. just be standing by so here at the Hooker Commercial Championships like where the action the dog, continues unabated. For now, in your back life. to you and Send just a folks. Of or someone who looks like you Jimmy, you asked for it. And we gave it to you. And now, here it is. What they're thinking, what they're doing, who they are, who they'd rather be. Our reporter, Peter Protector, is in middle-class Pennsylvania <laughs> with the real lowdown. Peter? Hello, hello Ed? C can you hear me? Microphone working? Uh, I, am, I am couched under the couch here in the comfortable home of the Cool Zip family, typically middle-class, uh, pressured by the gas crisis, crying over the drought, and feeling more than a little bit under the weather. But in spite of these seemingly insurmountable difficulties, Americans st still seem to have time to think about the important things in life, like sex. Oh, uh. Peggy, you look beautiful. Elliot. Peggy, I, well, may I, may I come in? Oh, I I'm so glad you're here. I... Uh, uh. My foot. Am I early? No. No. Please, let's... Let's not talk about it. Let's... Well, well... <laughs> you know what I want to talk about, Peggy. Not, not now, Elliot. Not here. My cheek. All right. All right, may I uh, fix a drink? Oh, I'd like one too, Elliot. Go ahead. Shall I, uh, shall I uh, make it three? 
Where's your husband, Random? Well, Elliot, I, I think you're my date tonight. <laughs> Peggy. I only hope that horrible, horrible Herbert Dump <laughs> won't be here tonight. Oh, horrible Herbert Dump. Oh, that's he horrible has, Herbert he, Dump. Horrible, horrible Dump. Yes. Yes, he has to be. He does? He does. Hook me. <laughs> Why did you slap me? I told you not here, not now. You slapped me. Oh, I thought that was you slapping me. No. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right, Peggy. I. How do you How do you think it looks? You and me at the swings party. Oh. Just the two of us. Yes. Without your husband, <laughs> here's your gimlet, dear. Thank you. What will Rich and Linda think? Mm -hmm. Not to mention Woodrow Stool. I told you not to mention him. Or Milton Pipe. I owe Milton a lot of money for the airport. I. You owe a lot of people a lot of money for a lot of airports. <laughs> oh. oh, I'll uh, I'll let them in. Oh, uh, hello, uh, Ethel. Hello, Elliot. You know Doris Drain, don't you, Elliot? Oh, <laughs> oh, I sure do. Hello, Doris. Hello, Elliot. <laughs> hello, Peggy. Hello, Doris. Hello, Ethel. Hello, Peggy. This is our friend Woodrow Stool. <laughs> hello, Peggy. Hello, Woodrow. Hi, Elliot. Uh, hi, Cecil. Gee, Ethel, I, uh... I didn't expect to see you here. Hello, Woodrow. <laughs> you remember my husband, Cecil? Yeah. Good evening, Cecil. Hello, Woody. <laughs> Hi, Doris. Hello, Cecil. Hello, Ethel. Hi, Doris. Hi, uh, mm. Ethel. Nice. What? Mm. Smells like a dead cat in you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, poor Peggy. <laughs> who's, who's Peggy? I, uh, I, I am. Oh, hi, Peggy. Uh, hello. Uh, Woodrow? Well, hello, Peggy. Oh, we met before. Oh, yes. Did you meet Ethel? Uh, yeah, I don't remember. Uh, 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 please sit down, everyone. Oh, I, I've never been so excited all my life. Would, uh, would anyone like one of these? Oh, I've seen those. Hey. Yes. Which end do you like? Yeah. <laughs> the twisted end or the end with all the stuff falling out? Huh? Well, Ed, as you can see, crisis, real or imagined, certainly seems to bring folks together. And while they're doing <laughs> just that, I think for modesty's sake, I... We'd better go back to you, Ed. Some things are always the same, even though they change. <laughs> Sometimes they change before you're born. We call that history. <laughs> Let's go back into history now and take a look at the roots of our family tree. I'm here in New York City in the prestigious Museum of the Rural South at 88th and Park. Look, Jimmy, there's Jackie selling pictures of Italian photographers for charity. <laughs> and there's Sammy Davis and Miss Lillian. And look, there's a tableau of the Old South. Gentle folks soaked through with the bitter dregs of the Civil War. And I think someone's knocking at the door. Field Marshal Thomas Lagui Quadroon, honey. I'm back and I'm beautiful. <laughs> well, Tom, I'm so glad you're back, Tom. We missed you here at Bell Bottom. The cotton needs chopping, the mule won't start, and my checkbook is seriously out of balance. It's so good to have the slaves back, Tom. 
Did you learn any new songs up there in Detroit? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho, ho. Dizzy ain't no laughing matter. <laughs> well, that's right, Tom. I forgot you're a free man now. Oh, no, I ain't. Oh. I was expensive. I was a professional slave now. You've been walking over this kinky old carpet for 60 years. Is it really that long, Tom? <sighs> and now you go and go pay your carpet tax. <laughs> Put it right here in the bag. Bless for me. I die first. Okay. No! <laughs> Good shot, Tom. He's dead! Oh, it's a new world now, honeys. <laughs> Nobody going to have to be a slave all the time, no more. We going to take toys. <laughs> and guess whose toy it is now? <laughs> 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 Yes, it was their turn then. But it was our turn later. Uh, excuse me, excuse me? Who was uh, Amos anyway? We, we was small, small, small angry, men angry men with hairy faces, faces and, and burning, burning feces. Feet, feet. excuse me. <laughs> we was running away from, from the, the poverty, army, the, the intolerance, the army, army and the, the law. Army. The army! And the army! <laughs> And we took to them. And they took to us. And what do you think they took? Gas from Canada, gold from Mexico, geese from their neighbor's backyard, boom, boom. Corn from the Indians, tobacco from the Indians, Dakota from the Indians, New Jersey from the Indians, New Hampshire from the Indians, New England from the Indians, New Delhi from the Indians. Indonesia for the Indonesians. And don't forget Veterinarian's Day. <laughs> But you know, we couldn't do it alone. No, no. No, no. We needed the hope, the faith, the prayers, the fears. The sweat, the pain, the boils, the tears. The broken bones. The broken home. The total degradation of who? You, the little guy. Hey. <laughs> and you know, across you all, we flung one shining steel rail. Rockefeller, 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 Oh boy, defoliating a victory garden certainly does work up an appetite. <laughs> well, you just sit down, Father, and dig right in. That's right. This afternoon, I'll be able to start digging the pit. If I can get some work out of that boy of yours, I can have the bunker finished by erection day. <laughs> Where is Porgy, anyway? Oh, he's up in his room helping Porcelain make his bed. <laughs> Porgy! Porgy Terminator! He's so good with the servants, Fred. Uh, stop calling me Fred. My name's Adolf. Oh, Mr. Wade, yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Mom. <laughs> Golly, hot dog road cakes again. Heavy on the 38, Mom. Don't eat with your hands, son. Use your entrenching tool. Aw, oh, gee, Dad, I'm just trying to save time. I mean, it isn't every day a guy graduates from high school. <laughs> How many times have I heard that before? Oh, Dad. Well, I... you boys, just fight it out amongst yourselves. Okay, Mother. <laughs> oh. I've got to dress for my bridge club. Gee, Mom, isn't that bridge built yet? <clears throat> no, son. No, son, it isn't. Yes. And it won't be until free hands on both sides of the big ditch can press the same button at the same time. <laughs> oh, 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 all right, all right. 
heart says, I give golly. Can I eat my uh, throat cakes now? Only if you stay out of trouble, boy. Your shenanigans could cost me this election. Aw, oh, come on, Dad. No Irishman can stop you from getting to be dog killer this time. You're unnatural. Thanks. Don't wolf your food, little pig. Oh, oh, there's Mudhead. Graduation, here I come. So long, Dad. Keep him flying. Bye. Oh, that son of mine. He's not your son, Fred. Stop torturing me, Ethel. <laughs> Hey, you guys, just at the age where you're looking for an interesting and exciting career in the military, well, get into the sky where they can't find you higher than you've ever been before, behind the border, as a proud member of the Free Mexican Air Force. Well, this is Peggy Bliss Rips again at the Hooker Heights Sales Marathon, where quotas are being met or exceeded minute after minute. Now, let's listen to more of the Enterprise in action. <laughs> Skimming low out of border canyons, man, and across below sea level salt flats, you'll be jockeying the big birds, B-25s, flying uncounted tons of contraband marijuana into this United States. Yes, spreading Mexico's natural resources is a real fine job for any well young man of military age. So take off with guys like me in a Mexican free air force. <laughs> Comedian Mrs. Arlene Yakamoto of Pine Barren, New Jersey, doesn't know our napalm olive camera is focused on her. No, it's true. <laughs> you see, my husband is a policeman, and well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't recognize how dirty he, he makes my clothes. I mean, I mean it. It's it's unbelievable. <laughs> what? What's my line? Oh, but we believed Mrs. PQ and listened to her reaction. I about it all night sometimes, you know. I hate to admit it. I mean, look at this horrible stain. Sometimes I think my kids are doing it to me on purpose. <laughs> Ooh. Nothing's on purpose, ma'am. Who, who are you? Sergeant Sphincter of the Dirt Patrol. Oh. Our mission's to keep America clean. And when the job gets this dirty, there's only one weapon, new napalm olive with Enzyme irritants. Oh. It's surrounded by a thin, thin 16 millimeter shell, and inside, it's delicious. That's Arnie's whole beef halves. We deliver. Thirsty? You bet. Oh, wouldn't you like some of this old Filipino creamy coming in shorts and quarts? Yeah. And tubs of slaw. Give me two. Sorry, only one tub per family. Aww. That's whole beef halves. We deliver everywhere. Offer not good after curfew in sectors R and N. Uh, uh dear, dear, where's the, the dead cat? Uh, it's in the soap dish. Uh, but there's, there's soap in the soap dish. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the cat's in the soap. What? Well, well, you see, dear, there's a whole dead cat in every bar of dead cat soap. Oh, no! Oh, oh, oh. oh Peggy, for Christ's sake! <laughs> See that bear laughing up that good old country water? Sure makes a big hairy guy like me thirsty. And that's when I like to wrap my lips around a tall, sweaty, edible bottle of good old country bear whiz beer. As my old daddy said, son, it's in the water. That's why it's yellow. Bear Whiz Beer. Bear Whiz Beer, a liquid product of Andrew Bear Wits Brewery, Animal, Missouri. La vie la vie Oh, so no, so no, so no, so no, so no, so no, you know, that's by a great Italian composer. He's dead now, but lives on in stereo hi-fi, and this 
beautiful 12-inch record of 40 unclaimed melodies. You know, if you were to go into a record store and ask for them, they would think you were crazy. <laughs> Hello, I'm Don Giovanni, and I'm proud to speak to you for the Musical Heritage Surplus Club of Hong Kong. Now, wouldn't you like to raise the level of your home? Bring your family closer together around the hi-fi, listening to such immoral pieces of art like like B Days, the Fountain. <laughs> <laughs> or the Duke's duet from Il Schizophreno. It's a me, it's a you, it's a me, it's a you, it's a us. <laughs> yes, yes, and if you act now, we'll include at absolutely no cost to anyone this collection of 40 familiar sound effects. Now, who can forget? <laughs> or. <laughs> What about... <laughs> yes, friends, they're all yours. And if you act in time, we'll throw in this timeless three-record box bonanza of big band hymns. Titles like In a Persian Melon, Marching to Shibboleth, My Spanish Suitcase, Waltz for Three People, and The Hawaiian Hallucination Song. Yes, plus, if you're still breathing this fabulous sex. Hello, dear friends. This is Eric Burden. Yes, they did take away our music, but you can have it back on these three wonderful voice prints of the 60s. All your magic memories of flying over the music capitals of the world will come rushing back with the first twang of a lead guitar. Now, listen to all the monsters of the 60s at once. The Rolling Who, Derek and the Taylors, Clive Beadle, Bing Crosby, Stills and Nash, Songs like I've Got My Hand Over Your Mouth, Helicopter 59, Tight Shoes, I'll Be Gumping You, and hundreds of others. Goodness gracious, great God almighty, it's like having now, right in your living room. So don't wait till the midnight hour, send 15 seconds and code of credit to Rock and Roll Memory Bank, Hong Kong, New York, York. Yes, Ed, well, as you can see, records are being broken right and left here and melting away in the hot desert sun. But I know we have more places to go, so... Back to Central and you, Ed. As Vice President George L. Tirebiter once said, <laughs> You know, radio isn't just a silly old artifact like me. It's a tool like you. <laughs> and you're here today because your mom and dad and millions who liked them did it on the radio. Why? It's a mystery. And here's good old Charles Garage at the big old radio museum in rusty Atwater, Ohio. Tuning in on the solution. Charles? Well, Ed, you know, here they let the past speak for itself. The dusty old radios. They've got the whole dusty annals of old radio here, under glass. And I think, I think I've found one drama here, Ed, that seems to say it all. <laughs> Los Angeles, he walks again by night. Out of the fog, into the smog, <coughs> relentlessly, ruthlessly. I wonder where Ruth is. Doggedly. Toward his weekly meeting with the unknown. At 4th and Drucker, he turns left. At Drucker and 4th, he turns right. He crosses MacArthur Park and walks into a great sandstone building. Oh! Roping for the door. He steps inside, climbs the 13 steps to his office. He walks in. He's ready for mystery. He's ready for excitement. He's ready for anything. He's... Nick Danger, third eye. Uh, hello? 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 I I'd like to order a pizza to go and no anchovies. No anchovies? You've got the wrong man. I spell my name Danger. What? Lusner Brothers, the makers of fine cereals and cigars, brings you another true story from the tattered case book of Nick Danger, Third Eye. Let's join him now in the adventure we call Cut Him Off at the Pass. 
let's get down to business. Uncross those beautiful stems of yours, baby, and here's the case I call number 666. Or if you're lying down, 999. <laughs> it all began innocently enough on Tuesday. I was sitting in my office that drizzly afternoon, listening to the monotonous staccato of rain on my desktop, <laughs> and reading my name on the glass of my office door, Regnad Kassin. <laughs> it had a sound to it, you know what I mean? My secretary lay snoring on the floor, her long, beautiful gams pinioned under mine. I didn't hear this guy enter, but my nostrils flared at the smell of his perfume. Pyramid patchouli. There was only one joker in LA sensitive enough to wear that scent, and I had to find out who he was. Good afternoon, Mr. Danger. I'm Rocky Rococo. Thanks, Half Pint. You just saved me a lot of investigative work. Maybe yes, you got an echo in your office. <laughs> Maybe no. Do you know what this is? I had to think for a minute. <laughs> oh, no, come on, Danger, step oh, it up. Um, <clears throat> my show. <laughs> what cruel game was he playing? Uh, that's a brown paper bag. That's correct. Now, look inside, Mr. Danger. What do you see? That's easy. That's your invisible pickle. Not so ah, invisible. invisible. <laughs> now, I, I think you're ready for this. <laughs> that's nothing but a two-bit ring from a crackerback jocks. I sell it to you for $5,000. What kind of a chump do you take me for? First class. <laughs> oh. That tarnished piece of tin is worthless. Worthless? <laughs> <laughs> Not to Melanie Haber. Melanie Haber? You may remember her as Audrey Farber. Audrey Farber? Susan Underhill? Susan Underhill? How about Betty Jo Bieloski? <laughs> Betty Jo Bieloski. I hadn't heard that name since my last college concert. <laughs> Everyone knew her as Nancy. Still does. Then it all came rushing back to me like the hot kiss at the end of a soft, wet fist. It had been pig night at the Om Mani Padme Sigma house. And we had escaped from the crowd of Buddhists and stood trembling underneath the dwarf maples. Oh, Nikki, 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 I, I don't know what to say. This is the most beautiful ring I've ever seen. Yeah, Nancy, it's really neat. Yeah. It cost me $5,000. Oh, Nikki, how can I ever repay you? Well, gee whiz, Nancy, how about 500 down and a 36-month contract? Uh, what? Or you could marry me. <gasps> oh, that's impossible, Nick. I, I can't marry you. I, I can't even tell you why. Maybe someday. All right, Nancy, I, I understand. Just sign here. Uh, oh, Nick, I... I Forgive you for this. And I'll never forget you neither, Nancy. And that's why I called you today, Nan I mean, Mrs. Haber, Farber. Something reminded me of that time so long ago under the dwarf maples. Oh, I, I don't know what prompted you to get in touch with me, but you called just in the nick of time. Oh, I see you haven't lost your delicate sense of humor, have you, Nancy? What? Never mind. Listen, Nick, I can't talk to you now. You have to get out here right away. My, my husband, he, it's the same old place at Santa Barbara, Nikki. Oh, Nikki, Nikki, I need you. I, oh. Nancy, I slipped the ring in my nose and the receiver in my pocket and headed for the door quickly. But I'd forgotten the little man with the evil grin. Just a second, danger. What about my pickup? You're lucky you still have your brown paper bag, small change. Ah, 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 ah. Danger. You haven't seen the last of me. No, but the first of you turns my stomach. Yeah. You'll be hearing from me again. <laughs> I headed down the hall in the opposite direction, toward the fire escape. <laughs> I 
I hadn't a minute to lose. Uh, ha, ha, hey, danger. <laughs> Where's the fire? It's in your eyes, Lieutenant Bradshaw. <laughs> Don't get wise with me, Peeper. You're lucky we didn't burn you on the Anselmo Pederazzi case. <laughs> 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 Look, you caught him, didn't you? Yeah, but the punk got away no thanks to you. <laughs> Listen, what brings your flat feet sniffing around this metaphor now, copper? Just a... F <laughs> Just a friendly word of advice, Danger. Yeah, what? Don't go sticking your big banana nose into police business. Sure, Lieutenant, is that all? Yeah, and don't talk with your mouth full. Okay, Bradshaw. Oh, and don't fidget while I talk to you. Sure, Lieutenant. And stop tracking mud across Mama's brand new kitchen. All right, all right. When I hit the street, the rain had already turned L.A. into a mud river. It was a short, dry swim down Alvarado to my convertible. <laughs> I had to get to Santa Barbara in a big hurry. As I whipped onto Mulholland Drive, the lights were just twinkling on across the San Fernandino Valley. I could barely make them out through the driving rain. Then a hard right down Big Tajunga Canyon. Ah, my tires squealed as I hit Sepulveda. A right, a left, a left, a right, a long, aching slide directly into a tree. We'll be back to Nick Danger in just a minute. But first, here's Xavier Cougar for Dreamo. I mean, they stop envying those big black Cuban cigars that make your favorite smoke look like a dead man's finger. Huh? Now, Dreamo cigars, the first choice of men with a nickel to spend, introduce Dreamo Negros, a surprisingly big cigar made bigger with plenty of rich, dark, heavily veined Cuban wrapper, moist, meaty filler, and attractive free drill tip. In three Super Havana Straight Styles, Primo, Perfect, and El Maximo <laughs> for men with more on their minds than just action. Dreamo Negros, just what you've been wishing you could have. And now back to Nick Danger, Third Eye. Four hours later, I parked my car in the carriage house, totaled, and walked up the gray gravel driveway between a row of dwarf maples toward the pillared entrance of the same mansion. The same mansion. <laughs> it had been snowing in Santa Barbara ever since the top of the page, and I had to shake the cornstarch off my mucklucks as I knocked on the heavy oaken door. Hey, hey in there, open up. <laughs> What's all this brouhaha? <laughs> brouhaha? Ha ha ha. <laughs> Wait a minute, this isn't funny. Come back here. All right. Come in out of the cornstarch and dry your mucklucks by the fire. Let me introduce myself. I am Nick Danger. No. Let me introduce myself. I am Nick Danger. Oh, well, if you're so smart, why don't you pick up your cues faster? Yeah. Are those my cues? Yes, and they must be dry by now. Why don't you pull them out of the sound of cellophane before they scorch? <laughs> All right, sir. May I take your cap and a jacket off? <laughs> no, you can take my you can take my hat and goat. <laughs> I, I assume you've come to see my mistress, Mr. Danger. I don't care about your private life or whatever her name is. I was afraid you didn't. I have come to see Net Mrs. Haber. Mrs. Haber. Audrey Farber? Audrey Farber? How about Betty Jo Bielowski? Oh, you mean Nancy. Well, <laughs> yeah, she's in the aviary stunting trees. Mm. <laughs> Stunning them, actually. <laughs> I I'll uh, return with her straight away. You can wait here in the sitting room, or you can shit out there in the waiting room. <laughs> there was something fishy about that butler. I think he was a Pisces, probably working for scale. Oh. <clears throat> Felt a thin shiver run up my spine at that pun. I was 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> of 
What was it about this place? The atmosphere was as phony as the two-door ba Tudor balustrade that, that leered at me from the top of the staircase, and there she stood. Stunted. Stunning. Stunning. All those curves showing through that flimsy burnoose. <laughs> it was it was Nancy running down the stairs. All the familiar sounds and smells of pig night came rushing back like a good snort of scotch. Then it struck me. Oh, 20 years later and she still knocked me out. Oh. Tune in again next week when Nick Danger meets the Asphalt Arabs in the further adventures of Nick Danger, Third Eye. <laughs> of course, you didn't have to wait to tune in until next week, because you could listen to more than just popular detectives. There were classical mysteries as well, performed in real English accents. <laughs> like this one. In Flemish times, two warring houses did unite in happy strife, one upon the other. And a brother fought against brother saw with pride inside the dismal castle walls, where still a dark and awful secret hangs twixt Count and his confused legs, made more confused by midnight mingling neath ancestral sheets. Yet all that strange and dark at dawn shall be illumined by the rightful sun and come to just conclusion when day is done. Life, it ain't so grand. Bend, boys, bend. But me feet, at least they're on dry land. Bend, boys, bend. No! Ah! <laughs> Odds balls! Tis the ghost. Evacuate into the morning mists, oh dreadful wraith. Now sleep sits moistly upon my face these clammy nights. Ah! Long off, I've walked these hurry, withering heights in aimless, mindless searching for a man with blunted aim and mobile tights. Motley tights he means with holes, and only royal butts to sit in royal tights. Edmund! Edmund, Edmund. Not Edmund, Edmund. Fresh return from fights in France, but rightful Edmund. Happy Edmund. Princely Edmund. He means drunken Edmund, who nightly wassels with the extras and wrestles with his sometime niece. I'll fetch him flat. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Show me, me. Ha! Ah! There it floats like oil upon a seagull. Ah, Edmund. <laughs> Tis King Bernardo. He walks again, as it was written in antique script. This doth pretend deep treachery and muddy secrets to be told. I'll follow him. Go not, young master, ere he lead you to L. L? What L? What's L to me or me to L? What the L? <laughs> as a tiny tot, t'was told me not to cross the moat. And then my mum, she did bespeak me, cast the moat from mine own eye. And so I crossed mine eyes and double-crossed me mum, who fell into the moat. <laughs> then she bade me warning that I play not by myself would make me mad. <laughs> but I was deaf, and so I leaped into the burning bush. And lo, although consumed with fire, I rose again to bite another apple on yet another eve. <laughs> Afraid of hell? Are we not men? If we fall, can we not rise again? Hot-headed, flushed with blood, we'll take it standing up. We'll take it lying down. We'll get it any way we can. St. Mickey, save me! Come not close 
Tis done. Tis done. Tis well, tis done. Tis done. He's gone. Tis done. Oh, get on. Stand. All right, all right. <clears throat> tis true. He's fallen to the sea. Oh, follow not, lest a ghost you be. King Bernardo walks again. There was a secret pregnant on his lips that died on board. He could give it birth. What does this mean? Oh. Oh. What dare I do? I'm but a man, and yet a boy. Not yet a man, yet not a boy. I'm like a little boy, speaking like a man, be suited in tight tights that squeeze upon the parts that make me wonder if I'm a little boy. <laughs> what am I? I'm hungry. Oh. Gods, ho, oh, bring on the nuts and ale and meat. We'll deal with this and on, 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 and on. Let's eat! Let's eat! Come on, you're a huh? Let's talk about your car. It's screaming. Wash me, please! Now, if you're a Mr. Common Sense, you won't believe me when I tell you that I've got an envelope that'll clean your car while you're driving it home to work. Well, Believe me this time, because this one isn't like the Austrian self-sharpening razors. No, friends, no overheating like the tropical fishes. Or my name isn't Bob Baseline. And my name isn't Bob Baseline. Well, as you can see, we're back here for the closing moments of the commercial marathon. I know you won't want to miss one exciting word of it, so let's listen in. Don't get hurt, says everyone over at Wendy's Air Room. Get blown over in a refined private club. Bartender Andy Winsock makes his drinks double price during release hour. And hostess Wendy Airsock invites sexual conversation around her organ. Now we have those Chinese movies. The way you like them, the only way they can make them. Don't forget compressed air with each drink at the corner of Red Light Way and stop in Hooker. Isadora's Dunkin' Donuts. Yes, all the big wheels on campus love to scarf them up. And you don't have to break your neck to find your local Isadora's. Special this week, Greek Donuts with the holes in the rear. Isadora's Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> For a break job that's truly not insane, visit Clarence Despair's House of Bad Breaks, where this week only my man Clarence will root out your rotas and ream out your retros. So say, if you got a rocket and you can't dock it, and the man wants to lock it, be kind to your pocket, you don't have to hock it, flock it! At my man Clarence Despair's Mano Space Garage, don't junk it. Just plunk it down where it is truly not insane. Hello, I'm Kim Cool, glamorous sex star. I'll bet you're ready for a break in the hard action. I'm ready too for a long, tall, delicious glass of meat. Yes, there's nothing like hot, sugar-fed meat served up in attractive, individually packaged swaddles like these. Mmm. So why not just lie back and enjoy it? Oh, don't worry about the mess. My lips are sealed. Everyone knows that this is the midst of the disillusionment and heartbreak season. And with the recent outbreak of a suicidal strain of despair in Boston, oh, no. you'd better keep a close watch on your emotions. Remember the seven danger signals of depression? A general and lasting feeling of hopelessness. 
inability to concentrate. Loss of self-esteem, fear of rejection, misdirected anger, feelings of guilt, and extreme dependency on others. At the first sign of these symptoms, follow these simple rules. Keep working, drink as much as possible, and take your television's advice. And you know more TVs recommend an amazing new psychic breakthrough than any other? Confidence in the system. Fast, safe and guaranteed by constant federal control. Confidence in the system will keep them in power longer, longer, longer. And tend to calm and obscure the miseries of disillusionment and despair. Confidence in the system, in easy to swallow propaganda form, or new fast acting thought control. Have some today. It's almost over, Jimmy. And we're back where it all began, here in this tiny square of weeds called No Man's Park. With me here in the field are field reporters Peter Protector. How do you do? Charles Garage. And that little voice in my ear, our producer, Thatch Switcher. Glad to be out here, glad to be out here. Now. Well, you're here. the oldest, Charles. Kick it off. Well, from here, Ed, I, I think that big story is visualization. Mm. Yeah, yep. Just look at this tiny, sodden postage stamp of ground we're standing on. But at one time, you know, originally over, right over there, I think, we had some yep. merchants, some... Uh, Settlers, some pilgrims, some trappers, some soldiers. They all had buckles on, uh, their shoes. The soldiers would have all been in armor. Yeah. Just, Just folks. folks. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and over there, about where you're standing, there were some Indians, all dressed up and looking like Courier and Ives. Guardians, Guardians of, of this, this sacred, sacred land. land. And in between this sumptuous feast, oh, yeah. untouched as yet by hand of man. Yum, 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 yum. I'd like some of that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the leader of the white man spoke. Let's whop them Indians, he said. Uh, yeah. The Indians, of course, had uh, nothing to say. And so, of course, they said nothing. <laughs> well, I think that we can agree that that's a typical scene, gentlemen, one oh, yeah, which yes, was yes, to be yes, repeated yes. thousands of times. In the thousands of times. To come. Uh, except this first one was different. Well, why did the first one have to be different? You know, it didn't seem different at first. No, no, no. You... According to this, one of the soldiers walked over to one of the Indians and throttled him like, like that. Whoa! Oh, yeah, that's right. I can see that. Yeah. Oh, sorry, old man. Well, anyway, you can bet that made the folks in the Buckley shoes as proud as punch. Manifest destiny, said the captain of the ship. That Indian is good and dead, said the minister's wife. A dead Indian is good, I cleverly rejoined the captain of the dragoons. The only good engine is a dead engine, finally said a little boy. And they all applauded. <laughs> And you know they were about to let that little boy eat the Indian's heart. Yum, yum! When someone... I think it was that minister. ...reminded them that they were all Christians. And eating the heart of an Indian isn't really something that Christ would do. <laughs> oh! Mm. The Indian didn't say anything because... Of course. ...he was dead. <laughs> Good heavens! Exclaimed the chief of the Indians. These people not friendly. Hmm. Depend on what you mean by friendly, said the medicine man. Depend on what you mean by people, <laughs> said the chief. And he shot an arrow at the soldier, which bounced off the soldier's armor. <laughs> na, 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 na. Exclaimed the minister's wife, and she raised her buckley musket. Bang! Uh, said the musket. And a couple of Indians fell dead, what? clutching their intestines. Which spilled out on this ground. Well, folks, that really got things going. There was a lot of shooting and dodging behind trees and skulking and so on. <laughs> the Indians killed a few settlers. And these settlers, you can be sure, killed a lot of Indians. And the feast was still untouched. And it looked as if democracy was being made safe for <laughs> America! When? All of a sudden, gentlemen, a very strange and unprecedented thing happened. What happened was... And, uh, you know, this is going to sound just a little strange. What happened was... All the white people turned into black people. Zap! Like that. <laughs> no, bro! <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Now, you may think that this amazed and befuddled the Indians. Mm, not so. All the Indians turned into Chinese. Oh. 
<laughs> this was a quite a turn of events. Well then, folks, a funny thing happened. Yes, sir. All the settlers took off their buckles and the girdles, and they started dancing and decorating each other. And uh, a few days later, someone... I think it was that nice minister. Uh, said... What about this war we was a having? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What was we fighting about? I think we're going to take their land. Oh, that's unthinkable. And besides, what do you mean, their land? <laughs> I dig it. It's no man's land. Right on. Ah, yes. Well, you see, after only a short hesitation then, the black people and the uh, yellow people, they got together socially. Miss me. Hey, hey. 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 The duck <laughs> and a little hanky-panky took place amongst the younger folks. And everything got sort of blended yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Till one day, they all looked around and there was nothing but Indians. <laughs> That's right, folks. Absolutely nothing but Indians. You see, and here comes that headline. The beep, definition beep, 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 of an Indian is a white beep, 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 man who becomes a black man who becomes a yellow man who becomes a white man who becomes a black man who becomes a yellow now, man. Now, some may say that's an oversimplification. Well, it is an oversimplification. Oh, right. Yeah, but from where we stand today, it looks to us like it's better than killing people, doesn't it? Sort of oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Mark A. Ward.